Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for taking the time to come to my talk. I really appreciate it. Today, I'll be presenting Rotorist, our work on continuous risk angle tracking for mobile device input. First, I want to thank my amazing um, co-authors on the paper, both Eric Akar and Benko. New computing platforms such as head-mounted displays for virtual and augmented reality have the potential to change the way we work, play, and communicate. More and more, our computing services are not limited to the surfaces uh, and smartphone screens in our hands, but are placed ubiquitously throughout the environment. Wearables are great solutions for these interfaces, as they are continuously available, but most are focused on uh, detecting events like taps, clicks, or other gestures. These are useful, but we need to complement these gestures with precise continuous tracking for common tasks such as pointing or drawing. To enable precise tracking, we built Rotorus. It's a high-precision infrared light-based tracking technique that goes beyond discrete events and tracks two degrees of freedom relative angle of the wrist with respect to the forearm using a wristband in real time. Here we show Rotorist, which can be used to reconstruct hand posts. Now I want to focus on the related work on inside-out wrist tracking. There has been many work in this space, and I've split them into two main categories tracking the wrist movement by leveraging the internal anatomy of the wrist and tracking using the external contours of the hand. So in this space, we have work that use EMG signals as shown in EM press or control lab and uh, that can track wrist and finger movement. Other methods include air pressure sensors, EIT, and pressure sensors. IR light has also been used in sense IR to detect gestures using the wristband. Other methods include capacitive sensors, ultrasound, and bioacoustic signals. Now let's look at the work that use the external contours of the hand to track hand movement. In this space, we have camera-based methods like digits, proximity sensors like wrist swirl, sonar like finger audio, and more recently, beam band showed that ultrasound can be used to track wrist movement in one dimension. Tactual has also showed that they can use capacitor sensing to not only track wrist angle, but also finger movement. And lastly, millimeter wave can be used to track wrist or hand movement. Now, the reason I brought all these related work was to conduct a comparison between them and show which one might be useful for the goals that we initially put forward. Setting aside that previous work has not demonstrated that some of these methods can be continuous tracking, these systems are often very sensitive to the position and potential slippage of the device, and therefore often require per session or per user training. On the other side, external methods that typically are more immune to slippage, among them we picked uh, IR light, which has been shown to have good form factor in public consumption, but was not shown that it can continuously track uh, the risk with minimal calibration between users. Now let's talk about how Rotorist works. The system consists of a sensing wristband that incorporates eight common flight IR modules and a controller armband that handles power and communication. Each low power sensor measures the absolute distance from the sensors to hands. The conical field of view of each individual time of flight sensor overlaps significantly. As the user moves their wrist the relative distance between the hand and each sensor changes, which Rotorist uses to measure the 2D operator's orientation. Our goal here is to enable interactions in a manner that is subtle, portable, precise, and does not require user calibration. We use a simple tracking algorithm that reliably tracks wrist orientation across the user. As expected, we observed that the topmost S2, S3, S4, and the bottommost S6, S7, S8 sensors have the most linear effect when there is a flexion extension activity or a pitch. The sensors on the left, S8, S1, S2, and the right side, S4, S5, and S6, are most responsive uh, to radial ulnar deviation, which we call YAW. We model these observations using these two equations, where DSI refers to the distance value that is returned by the sensor SI at, edit at a set of point in time. For each of the equations, there's a weight term associated, associated with each of the sensors, uh, WPSI and WYSI, which defines the individual weight given to a particular sensor, and BP and DBI refer to, to a bias of the value. We learn these 14 parameters in a user study 
and we formulate the problem as a nonlinear optimization, which we sell using November uh, marker lag algorithm. To evaluate our system, we recruited 15 participants and asked them to perform two four-minute sessions. The users were asked to move the wrist in a random orientation while keeping the fit. Data was captured by both an OptiTrack system and rotors. In the beginning of each session, we asked the users to perform three up and down and three left and right movements with their wrist. We evaluated the tracking accuracy of rotors in three different categories. The first one is cross user where no calibration is needed. Second is cross session where we train on the first session of a user and test on the second session from the same user. And the third one is per session where we use the initial up and down and left and right wrist movements of the user to train our device and, and test on the rest of that session. The figure on the right shows the CDF of orientation accuracy between all three evaluate, evaluation discussed. The ability to track one's wrist orientation reliably and precisely without precision training enables a wide range of applications. To highlight rotor's ability to perform fine grain continuous tracking and beyond gestural strike, we implemented a drawing application drive, driven uh, only by the user's wrist orientation. This freeform drawing can be used to draw shapes or gestures recognition, or can be used for handwriting recognition, reconstruction type. Here we show a user that use rotorist to write hello in midair. By combining rotorist with an arm or wrist tracking solution, pointing can be done in absolute coordinates. To demonstrate this, we attach a RIP S handhold controller to the top of the controller arm back. During a simple calibration phase, we determine the transformation from the pose of the wrist S controller to the pose of the hand. At runtime, we add this, uh, add the wrist angle estimated from rotorist to the transform pose of the controller to accurately capture the six up pose of the hand. To demonstrate the potential of rotorous as a pointing device, we demonstrated how it can be used to play beat theater, one of the most popular VR experiences. In this video, we purposely had a user play the game using a Rift X handphone controller on their right hand while having our device on their left, and so that we can compare the two input devices. Now you can Now you can see even with larger hand movements and wrist rotations, which is more natural way of playing, our device still performs well. Rotorist is also robust to most changes in hand pose. For example, a user can change their wrist pose from a fist to an open palm. They can also move their individual fingers without affecting the wrist pose estimation. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for listening. I would be happy to take any questions.